And if you think that we all die the same way, right? I mean, every human being leaves this earth the same way. We all die of hypoxia, lack of oxygen to the brain. But um, it's just what causes that to happen, right? Is it a gunshot wound, a boss, a stroke, you know, heart attack? Um, but the truth is that this level of oxygen management in the body is a measurable thing. You're either using oxygen very well, and therefore you are slowly approximating the grave, or you're using oxygen very poorly, and you are accelerating towards the grave. So, for example, when you look at um, how human beings are truly powered, right? Like, where do we really get our energy from? It's really one energy source called ATP, right? And it's produced inside this little organelle called the mitochondria. There's about 110 trillion of these in your body. 10% of your body weight is mitochondria. And the mitochondria um, has a voracious appetite for oxygen. When it receives oxygen, it will create 16 times more energy. It will produce 36 ATP rather than 2 ATP. So imagine a little mitochondria that has a motor inside of it called the Krebs cycle. And every time this motor makes one revolution, it has two choices. It can either create two units of energy, 2 ATP, or it can create 36 units of energy, 36 ATP. The difference between a 16-fold increase or 16-fold decrease in energy is the presence of oxygen. And so if oxygen enters this cycle, right, it produces 16 times more energy. It puts out hot, uh, uh, water and it also puts out carbon dioxide. Um, if there's no oxygen present, it only produces uh, 2 ATP and it releases uh, lactic acid, and which, by the way, doesn't make your muscles burn, but it releases lactic acid. So what if... You, when you used a red light bed, one of those wavelengths of light actually goes through the mitochondrial wall and it goes into this motor. It goes into the Krebs cycle and it actually kicks out a gas called mitochondrial nitric oxide and forces oxygen to dock. There's a little place in this motor called cytochrome C oxidase and cytochrome C oxidase is like a one-armed man. He can either shake hands with oxygen or he can shake hands with nitric oxide, but he can't do both. So if I can get him to let go of nitric oxide and grab oxygen, I can get a 16-fold increase in mitochondrial output. Whoa. So that's what happens with red light. And like do you get that from sunlight from as well? Is that something you get, it from you get sunlight from sun exposure? exposure? Just not at the depth that you would get from a red light bed. Mm. This is why I'm saying that if you don't have the budget for a red light bed, but the majority of people don't, the benefits of getting first light in the morning are so much more astounding than you think, but because it's free, people don't, um, you know, they, they don't they think don't of give it as that important. Yeah, they right. don't think of it as they that They give important. it as woo-woo. Yeah, so this will go a few inches into the skin, 360 degrees around. If you look at photobiomodulation and the treatment of Parkinson's syndrome, like, like using um, red light therapy on the skull for neurogenic disorders and neuroinflammatory conditions, if you look at um, arthritic conditions, um, and, and you know, all kinds of inflammatory pathologies in the body and the impact of photobiomodulation, it is astounding what light does in the human body. Laying in red light therapy every day, if you do that for a month, even if you did it 10 minutes a day for 30 days, at the end of that month, you would notice a profound and material change in your performance. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why there's red light beds at the, uh, you know, the UFC performance right. center but the ones like a juve is like a, how much less powerful i would say juve is a good right so it's a something full body red light therapy is best right um we already know it's it, it's it's effects for wound healing collagen fibrin elastin inflammation reduction the improvement in um, microvascular circulation, so like in the in your eyes, liver, lungs, pancreas, kidneys, brain, that that photobiomodulation is very good for neural inflammation, um, and because of the way that it upstages the mitochondria, just think you got 110 trillion mitochondria in your body. If you could power those mitochondria up, if you could get a 16-fold step up in cellular energy, just think of the amount of extra waste elimination, repair, detoxification mm. um, that you could that you could cause. And it, is it dangerous to your <clears throat> eyes? Because one of the things about those light beds, they make you wear eye goggles. They make you wear eye goggles. I probably shouldn't say this on a podcast, but I mean, say it. I don't. You don't? I will Do you ever open your eyes? I leave them wide open. 
and wide look open. right at the light. What? Yeah. It's and not bad for your eyes? You, you Watch what happens to your vision after a week to 14 days of being in a red light therapy bed without eye protection. Really? If you don't have a marked improvement in your in your, in your your vision, I'd be very surprised. So what is the negative aspect of Why do they tell you to cover your eyes? Well, because, you know, I, mean, I guess the... the bright light if you're staring directly at one of, one of those lights if you have some kind of photosensitivity or damage to your rods or your cones or your macula or your retina i mean if you had eye pathology um which you would know about then there might be some some downside consequences but you just lay there and stare at that fucker right at the light <laughs> with my eyes wide open i'm 54 years old i don't wear um well 53 years old don't add a year to my life but and i don't i don't wear reading glasses or anything i really? a small font on my phone I Dude, I do. You do? Yeah, my shit started falling apart at like 44, <laughs> 45. Did it? I really started noticing. But I started taking- I'd be interested uh, to find out what happens after you're in that red light. I'm down. Let's go. <clears throat> um, I started taking uh, pure encapsulations. Um, I love uh, those guys. Yeah, macro support. Mm -hmm. And I stopped the, uh, the, the de degradation of my vision. It oh. hasn't gotten worse. Great. Yeah, so yeah. it got. It's not the best, but you know my font's not that big. Yeah, you know I can, see I can that magnesium. I can, I can read that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I, I can read websites. I don't need glasses, but when I use glasses, I definitely see things much better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it helps. The uh, Juve website says only when you're at one setting do you need the eye protection for their newer th devices. You don't need the it. newer generation 3.0. So what does it say? Red wavelength only. Eye protection is not required and may be beneficial. For maintaining oh, health. Good. I'm glad they're doing that. Aware. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad and, they're doing that. But the Juve, they, they don't make one that juices you up the way yours does. No, God, no. No. That's 125 milliwatts of radiance more powerful than anything on the market. Wow. I think the next bed has maybe 15,000 light diodes. There's 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 45,000 light diodes in that bed. Okay. You know, the, so the one is diodes good, are made by Aspen The other one laser. is great. Yeah. So Juve does something for you. It's not bad for yeah. you. It's good for you, but it's not fantastic for but, you. But again, start with, start with sunlight, skin exposure, right? right. Um, Huberman talks about that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Sorry I'm a huge fan of that. Huberman. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. the best. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, um, and he's just also made this kind of science uh, so much more accessible to people. Yeah, and, and it's still, I mean, just blowing my mind all the things I'm learning from you, which is just thank you. I've been learning this stuff for so long, but that's part of the problem. Is it's so difficult to like maintain this information in your head no like, doubt to keep it and i know I, I want to get it to the masses like you know i won't i don't want my like social media and podcasts and, and stage talks and things of like that for me to be speaking to my peers i feel like right. the woke biohacking crowd has enough woke biohackers that are doing a great job out there that somebody needs to just talk to the masses 